Cookies, Rome Roma here. Welcome back to my channel and for today's video we're going to be doing a book review on The Inner Temple of Witchcraft by Christopher Penzak. Now this book is actually part of a series that he did that as far as I know it goes The Inner Temple of Witchcraft, The Outer Temple of Witchcraft, The Temple of Shamanic Witchcraft which I also have and then I think it's the um high temple of witchcraft or something like that when you start getting into high magic. Now I have this one and I have the shamanic temple one. I don't have the other ones but I probably will plan to get them. So let's go ahead and get into the review. Now for this one I will be going back to my kind of pros and cons system and we're going to start with the cons. Now this I would consider a beginner's book. And unfortunately, like most beginner's book that I've read and found, it does kind of have a Wiccan bias in it. It's not, it's definitely not as bad as other ones that I've read. It's not nearly as bad as like Buckland or Scott Cunningham or anything, which I can't really say anything about Scott Cunningham because he does label his book as Wiccan. But it's just, it's one of those things that's always irked Mary where if you're going to label your book as witchcraft, keep to the craft. And I understand for more, especially traditional Wiccans, but even some eclectic Wiccans, they're one and the same, but they don't seem to realize for literally everybody else it's not. So, I mean, it's not, it's, it's really not as bad. There is some stuff in there that you can just kind of tell it's that Wiccan theology kind of squeezing in. But a lot of the information is still very much practical. Another thing is it's also... I think because of the Wiccan bias, it's very love and light. You know, anybody who kind of practices dark magic is basically not a witch or witches only heal and do good and all the fluffy bunny stuff. It just, like, I understand it if you're Wiccan, that's kind of how you see things, but that's, it's just, it's something that kind of irks me in a lot of books is it doesn't even consider the fact that healing and love and light is not all that witchcraft is. It's a good part of it, but it's not all that it is. Now, another thing that probably was the biggest thing that really just, for me, was there was a little bit of just straight up misinformation in this book. And I don't know if it was because he just wasn't really fully educated, which, well, no, let me step back because he did do the whole book on shamanism. But in this book, he basically says shamanism is a strictly Native American practice. It's not. That's a big argument that I get a lot when people kind of try to come at me for practicing shamanic techniques is, oh, that's a strictly Native American thing. No, many, many, many cultures have practiced shamanism. Whether it went by that same name is the thing. Most people, like shaman, the term shaman isn't even really used by most cultures that practice shamanism. That's just kind of an easy term to use. But the way he presented it was just like, it's a strictly Native American practice. If that was the case, why did you write a whole book on it if you're not Native American? pretty much showing people how to do those things. Because Native American is obviously, all those practices are closed. So you can't really just be writing a book telling people how to do those things. So it was just, I don't know if he wasn't maybe as educated at the time that he wrote the book or something, or he was just putting it that way to keep it basic. I don't know what his intentions was, but it just really irked me. There also is this thing where he says that people who practiced voodoo and voodoo and all those, the um, more African-American practices, are polytheists. And I'm not going to claim that I am super knowledgeable in that field because whiter than a cracker. But as far as I know, the whole religion surrounding voodoo is actually a monotheistic religion. It follows the same god as the Abrahamic god because of how voodoo came to be with the slave trade and how they had to adapt their beliefs to basically hide and have their tradition survive. 
So as far as I knew, they weren't polytheists. They, and I also, maybe it could be because of the, the way he's using the term polytheist could be different from how I think of a polytheist. I think of a polytheist as somebody who believes and worships more than one god, follows a religion that worships more than one god or goddess. Voodoo doesn't do that. There's the one god and then there's like the Loa and stuff like that. Like I said, I'm not super knowledgeable about it because that's obviously not a realm for me to be in, but as far as I understood, that's just straight up not true from what he said about the shamanism and the voodoo and stuff like that. I'm just like, no, that's not the case though. But I don't know, I don't know what his intentions were writing that, but it just, it, it, mm, mm. Another con with this book is it, it doesn't even consider secular witchcraft. And I do, I have seen a lot of other beginner books do that because of especially with the Wiccan bias, but secular witchcraft is a thing and it's a lot more common than most people think. So it's just, I, the fact that he, the way he was presenting things in the very beginning of the book, where he was kind of going through like the types of paths and the types of witches and kind of giving an overview of the options that are out there, Secular was not one of them. And he is not the first author to do that. And it's just, it's something that's disappointing to me. And I'm not even secular. But I know a lot of people that are, and I respect a lot of people that are. I respect everybody that is. So, like, why do most authors seem to just not even consider that that even exists? And another con, and I kind of mentioned this before with the whole love and light thing, but he basically says baneful work is not true witchcraft. And I'm just, it hit... It hit me right here. Like, that pisses me off so badly. And though I don't have a problem with Wicca, that is the type of shit that makes me really weary of people that are Wiccan to some extent. Because before, it, like, people don't understand that Wicca is not, is not an ancient religion whatsoever. It was made, like, in the 50s and 60s. So, do you think people were just not doing baneful work before that? Like, that was a big part of many, many, many practices way before Wicca became a thing. So, for so many authors to basically slap people like that in the face and say, you're not a witch because you do baneful work, it's really insulting to a lot of people. So, it just... Like, Scott Cunningham did it in one of his books, and he, Christopher Penzak didn't do it as harshly, but he still said it. And it just, I was, mm, just, mm, like, I can't do this, man. And one of the last big cons was he, he mentions, like, this is supposed to be the beginning book. This is supposed to lay the foundation to find your inner temple, thus the inner temple of witchcraft. But he mentions a lot of stuff that really is not beginner friendly, like whatsoever. Like there's astral travel in there, there's journey work in there, like spirit works in there, and I'm like that is stuff you're not supposed to be messing with if you're just now constructing your inner temple and you know basically laying down your path working for your craft. That's not something you should be touching yet. So it was just it was really weird how like he brought that into the mix almost right out the gate but then went really like not even very deep into it it just worries that like somebody could read this and he'd be like oh astral travel that seems simple because he explained it such in a simple manner didn't really say anything about you know don't do this yet try this later type thing they could try it and really fuck themselves up so why why did you put that in there because then he goes into journey work, obviously, in the shamanic one, but that's the third book. So, that's kind of okay, but 
putting it in this one, I don't even think you really needed to mention it, but I don't know. It, it's not a bad book, but there was just, mm. So now on to the prose. It was written really well. It flowed really well. It had things that I had not really seen in any other beginner book. Like things like the Witch's Pyramid. Like I was quite far along within my research before I even knew what that was because I had never seen it in any other beginner's book. And I got this kind of after I had already, I guess, stopped really labeling myself as like a super beginner. But I like to go back and read beginner's books because of stuff like this where they might have something in it that the under, other beginner books didn't. Another thing I really love is it has a lot of exercises. Like every chapter, there's one, if not more, exercises for you to do and for you to continuously practice. It also has kind of homework at the end of each chapter, similar to how Buckland did it with his complete book of witchcraft, where you have the you have the exercises throughout the chapter, and then you have the homework at the end, which can be a little bit different or expand upon the exercises that you may have been doing in the chapter and it just I really like that it gets you to actually physically and mentally do things as you're reading along with the book to kind of help you build that foundation and grow along with the book not just read it put it down then you might try something later so I really appreciate books that kind of give you stuff to do as you're going through it I do love how this book starts off with the things that it teaches you. It starts off with things like energy work, grounding, meditation, visualization. Those things are the absolute groundwork of any witchcraft or spiritual practice. Like that, when people ask me, oh, I'm starting to do this, where do I start? That's usually the first things that I name off are those exact things because all of those things help you get to know yourself, become more centered, become more connected with things around you. The, a lot of the exercises with visualization and everything help discipline you with your intent because that's extremely important obviously when you're doing magical work is you need to be able to concentrate and hold your focus and hold your intent for long periods of time and things like practicing grounding, practicing meditation, doing energy work, doing the visualization, all is going to help you discipline those parts within yourself that will help you when you actually move on to basically anything else. The other pro is I really like that he gets into the scientific aspects of things a little bit. Like the actual science of shifting consciousness when it comes to your brain and your brain waves and the changing of your brain waves and what that does to a person, how that affects you, how that affects your magical practice, how you can do certain types of meditations and things to induce cer certain states of brain waves. And I just, I really appreciate that scientific background of it because not a lot of people really, they kind of say, oh yeah, you know, there's, there's some science to kind of back up what we're doing, but they don't really go into it. I like the fact that he really actually talked about the brain waves, the brain waves. And when he does actually start discussing spell work, he, he does start off kind of with a safer route. He starts off with defensive magic which I can really appreciate that. That's even usually what I tell people when they're like, hey, I've done this, I've done that. I want to start getting into spell work, but I don't really know where to start. You can't really go wrong with defensive magic. It's not usually something that's ever going to backfire on you. It's either going to work or it's not. And if it works, all it's doing is just defending yourself and Defense is a huge, huge part of, you know, witchcraft and magical practices is your, no matter what you're doing, you're going to have to learn to defend yourself because the more you put yourself out there, the more you're opening yourself up to things. So I do appreciate that he started off with defensive magic. And of course, uh, the biggest thing, which is 
kind of obvious, but I do like it, and I like. I guess it's the way he went about it that I really appreciate was making the inner temple. That is basically the goal and the purpose of this book, is to go through these exercises and do these things to learn how to make your inner temple. And that, for me, is such a very important thing when you're starting the craft, is you have to find that sacred space within yourself. This, this is great, but it's really, really important to find that within here first because these things can be catalysts for your magic but everything really it, it, it comes from within so if you don't have that in your temple it may be more difficult for you and even for broom closeted witches this is you know you don't need all this back here if you can create that inner temple so that is just extremely important pretty much so i really do appreciate the fact that this book is what it is you know it's not perfect like i said i had the cons but i do really appreciate this book i would definitely recommend this book to beginners you know there is a little bit of that bias in there but it's not terrible it's not really shoving down your throat you know there is that little bit of misinformation but it's not a lot and it's stuff that'll easily be dispelled if you do a little bit more research anyway. So I really do recommend this book. I can't say that I recommend the rest of the series because I've only read this one and the Shaman one. I don't really want, I want, if I'm going to do this whole series, I'm going to do them in order. So it'll probably be a while before I do the Shaman one because I want to get the Outer Temple of Witchcraft first, read through that, do a review on that, and then, you know, keep moving on through the series. But... So I can't speak for the whole series, but for this book, definitely recommend it. So far, I've really liked this author compared to some of the other ones that I've read so far. And apparently he makes some really good books on like gay witchcraft and stuff, which I find really interesting. So I've heard lots of other good stuff about a lot of his other books. So recommend this book. Go get this book if you want to learn some cool stuff. Yay. So... One thing I kind of want to end with is I'm going to start doing these. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing it at the end of the video all the time like this or if I'm going to be doing it at the beginning of the video, but I'm going to start doing the card of the day. So today's card that I pulled was the Father of Swords. And the Father of Swords really represents being fair, being analytical, being objective, kind of being able to step back from your emotions and kind of see things in a more logical light, in a more subjective, or more logical light, in a more objective light. So it gives you, it gives you a better perspective of things. This card is big on perspectives. As you can see, even with the imagery of the card, he's sitting on the sword. That's his perspective. So message of the day for that card of the day is to be able to kind of step back from your emotions a little bit and maybe look at certain situations in your life in a more objective way and see where it goes. So if you want me to kind of continue doing the whole tarot of the day, I might keep doing that. I don't know. I thought it was a fun little thing to either end or begin a video with. I don't know where I'm going to place it yet. This is the first time doing it. I don't know. We'll see. But that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this book review. All relevant links are in the description. Facebook, TikTok, Etsy, Amino, all that good stuff. We are still working our way towards the 100 subscriber giveaway. So check out my Etsy for everything I have available right now. Um, I'm, a lot of my stuff is actually sold out right now because my Etsy sort of took it off, but I will be restocking as quick as I can. Things have been crazy lately, but check out my Etsy for what I have. Look forward to that giveaway. Please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Ring the bell. YouTube might notify you when I post new content. Make peace, not Warcraft.